Hey there, welcome back to another slightly rednecked video. Today we're going to be making pickles. I actually already shot this intro once and then realized I wasn't even recording, so we're going to start this over again. So, if you guys are like me, you've tried to make pickles for years that just are just not crunchy enough, that's always the problem I have with homemade pickles. And I've tried adding tannins like oak leaves and grape leaves, I've tried adding pickle crisp to it. I've tried the whole, you know, make sure they're in an ice bath, uh, ice bath super fresh cucumbers and before you pack them in the jars, fill them with the brine, and then you water bath can them. Um, none of that stuff really works all that well. At best, I can get some of these tiny cucumbers like this to stay a little bit crispy, but for the most part, it's always disappointing. They're just not as crispy as I want them to be because I like a good crispy pickle. But I found a new method that works like a charm, and that's what I'm going to share with you today. All right, so um, we've got all our stuff here to get ready. I've got my uh, brine heating up. I've already packed a couple of jars, but we'll go do more. That's okay. Um, I've got my brine heating up. Let's talk about your brine real quick. You need to use a good um, high acid brine, and that's the thing that makes pickles safe to water bath, can, and shelf stable is the acid content in them. So use, um, I've got a 5% white distilled vinegar right here. You don't have, this is great value. You don't have to buy any special brand. Vinegar is vinegar but make sure it's a processed vinegar. Don't go with a raw, like an apple cider with the mother in it. You could use apple cider vinegar, but use a processed apple cider vinegar because what we're really making sure is that the pH values stay low enough to prevent things like botulism growth. Botulism won't grow in anything below about like a, what is it, a 2.5 uh, pH, I think. If it's 2.5 or lower, you're okay. You're not gonna have to worry about botulism. That's the big concern. Anything else, I mean, if these spoil and go bad and, and mold or whatever, you're going to know it. But botulism is tasteless, odorless, and it's deadly. So we want to make sure we avoid botulism. That's going to be done with the acid, the vinegar in it. Um, so anyway, with that being said, my brine is one quart of vinegar, one quart of water. I just use tap water. You could use a distilled water. Lots of people will say use distilled water. It doesn't really matter. Tap water works just fine. Um, I'm going to heat that up. Oh. One quart vinegar, one quart water, and then a half cup of canning salt. Now make sure you use a good canning salt. Uh, this is the one I'm using. It's Morton Canning and Pickling Salt. There's lots of different ones out there, but use one that's for canning and pickling, not an iodized salt like your table salt. You don't want to use table salt in this. All right. Um, the rest of the ingredients are pretty simple. I've got some cucumbers. I've got a couple of jalapenos because I like a spicy pickle. So some of these jars are going to have jalapeno in it. Um, and I just cut the top off the jalapeno and throw it in the jar. Um, I've got some fresh dill. You could use um, dill seed if you don't have fresh dill or dried dill. Uh, you'd want to go about a tablespoon per jar, something like that. Um, and I've got some garlic, some fresh peeled garlic. Um, I'm going to throw a couple of cloves, start by packing my jars with a couple of cloves of garlic a good head or two of dill depending on how much you have just shove it in the jar i like some dill dill is one of my favorite herbs and i do like a good dill pickle you can cut these up into spears however you want to do it i usually cut bigger pickles into spears and the smaller ones i keep whole and then we're just going to pack them in the jar and this is very much like putting a puzzle together um, just put as many as you can in there fill up as much as the space as you can and leave at least a little bit of head space you don't want your uh, cucumbers sticking up above the rim of the jar of course or really you want to keep them a half about a half an inch below the rim of the jar so that the uh, brine will cover them so let's see I'm gonna save a couple of those great big ones for um, doing some pickle like dill pickle chips um, what was I gonna say uh, these I'm actually lucky my sister's garden is doing much better than mine this year and she gifted me some fresh cucumbers from her garden because I didn't really have enough. Oh, I do want to mention too, you do want to make sure you cut the blossom end off of the cucumber. You've got the, the end where the stem connects and then the other end is the blossom end. You want to cut just a just a quarter of an inch maybe, whatever it is, on these bigger cucumbers. Smaller ones are going to be smaller, of course, but you just want to cut the blossom end off. That will, um, the blossom end can have some chemicals in it or, you know, enzymes in it, I should say, that will um, affect your pickles and they won't be as good quality or as crunchy. So again, you could leave these whole if you wanted to. You can cut them into chips, you can cut them into spears. But what we're doing is just cutting these pickles up. We're putting them, or cucumbers, up, sticking them in the jar, shoving them down in there, getting them 
oops, I cut that one a little thin. Get them packed in there pretty much as tight as we can, uh, so there's just not a whole lot of room. I do like to use these quart jars. Where are these quarts or pints? I always get mixed up. Pint jars, quart jars. Yeah, pint jars is what they are. I do like to use the pint jars for pickles because we tend to not. If we use quart jars, that's an awful big jar of pickles. It's just me and my wife. We don't tend to go through them fast enough, um, so I like to use these smaller jars. We'll eat a whole jar of pickles before it. You know, it hasn't been sitting in the fridge open for too long. Get a little thin on some of these. I may have to go just whole cucumbers in here. These little pickles like this, these little cucumbers like that are the best. So once you got your jar pretty well packed, that's all there is to it. We're gonna come over here, set it over here, and we're gonna fill these jars here in a minute. But I gotta get the rest of these jars packed up. I am gonna do at least one jar of chips, of dill pickle chips. Um, and then we'll get on to processing. That's where the big difference. This is so far just like any other pickle recipe, really. But processing them is different in this method than what you would normally do with a water bath canning method. So let me get these packed up, and then we'll be right back with you. Okay, so when it comes time to loading these jars up, I want to work fairly quickly whenever I do this. I want to get them you know, loaded up, get them sealed up. Uh, with the lids and get them in the canner fairly quickly. My canner is already heated up. Now here's the trick to this. We want to heat this canner up to 180 degrees, between 180 and 185 degrees. We don't want it boiling. We want it 180 to 185 degrees and that's important. It's got to be at least 180 degrees. I'll talk more about that here in just a few minutes. All right, so there's nothing tricky about loading up the uh, jars. We're just going to get some uh, brine, spoon it into my jar. A funnel helps really well. Load them up within a half inch Give them a half inch of headspace, and that's pretty good. And then, I mean, this is just like normal canning. Let me get, you, you can use a chopstick or something like that. Push down in there a little bit. Make sure there's no air bubbles in there. Make sure your pickles are down below the brine. And then a half inch of headspace. You can measure that out if you want to. I kind of know where it is. There we go. That's perfect. That's a half inch headspace. And then the next thing we're going to do, wipe the rim off with a damp cloth. I use a damp paper towel. Just make sure that there's a good seal. We don't have anything in between there and the lid itself. We're going to put a lid on and a ring on. And again, just like normal canning, I hope my arm's not in the way too much. We just want to go finger tight. You don't want to crank that down. You want to just go finger tight. And then we're going to set that in the canner. Let me get the rest of my jars filled up and we'll come back and show you the next step because it's exactly the same for all these jars. I just want to work fairly quickly. I don't want to pedal too much. Um, if I give it too much time, the lids will start sealing before they're processed and that's not a good thing. So let me get these done and we'll be back with you. Okay, I'm not really in camera, but you, you get the idea. You can see my canner. Um, so now it's time to process these. And we're going to do this very much like a normal water bath can. I'm going to drop these down in there. And you want to make sure the water covers the top of the cans by an inch. And it doesn't quite, I don't think it does. i got to add some water. Okay, got some water added to the canner. So now we're a good inch over the top of the jars. And we want to bring this up to 180 degrees. Between 100 and 185 degrees, we're going to hold it there for 30 minutes. Let me back this camera up while I'm waiting on this canner to heat up, and we'll talk a little bit about why this works and, uh, you know, cautions and that kind of thing. All right, so like I said, while we're waiting on the uh, canner to heat up where I need it to be, get a good thermometer, a good candy thermometer or something like that so you can monitor the temperature. That's the most important part of this process. If you go too much over 185 degrees, then it's going to cook the pickles or they're going to get mushy. And that's really why water bath canning always ends up with somewhat mushy pickles because you're, you're boiling them basically. You're cooking the pickles for 15, 20 minutes and that's going to make them soft. Now this process never gets up to boiling. We're going to keep it at 180 to 185 degrees. You've got to keep it at 180 or above though. If it drops below 180, these are not going to be safe to store on the shelf. Uh, you're going to be running into food spoilage problems and those kinds of things. Now, I, I've researched, this is a new method to me. Um, I had to look it up. It is an approved food safe method by the National Canning, uh, whatever that's called. You know, you look it up online. Uh, you can go to their website, NC, 
was it NCN, NCH, I can't remember the website. I'll put a link down below to the article that shows on their website that it is a safe canning practice. But they don't put a recipe on there for your brine. They just give you the instructions like what I'm doing. Just put your can, put them in the canner, put your cucumbers in the canner, can, you know, 180 degrees for 30 minutes. That's it, 30 minutes. Whether it's a pint or a quart, it doesn't matter, 30 minutes. Um, and that's going to kill off the bacteria and things like that that are that could lead to, um, you know, uh, yeast and mold and, and and some of those kinds of things. Now the concern with those things, let me clean my glasses off here while I'm talking to you. The concern with those things, really the big concern, like I said earlier, is botulism. Botulism, you can't smell it, you can't taste it, it you don't you don't even know it's there, but it's deadly. It can it can kill you. Just a very small amount can kill you. So that's what you really want to be careful of. Now luckily we're using a, a very high acidity uh, brine. It's half vinegar, half water. That's gonna, be, that's gonna be real high, so low pH, really low pH. You could get a pH meter and measure it if you wanted to, but I'm not gonna worry about that too much. So we're not too much worried about the, um, the, the botulism growing in there. And if anything else happens, a mold, a yeast, you know, something like that, they spoil, you're gonna know that. It's gonna smell bad, it's gonna look bad, don't eat it. If you're in doubt, throw it out. That's the general rule of thumb. The concern with some of that kind of stuff really is that if you do start getting yeast or mold growing in there, it can raise the pH of your brine in there and therefore allow botulism to grow. But again, if it looks bad, if it smells bad, don't eat it. Throw it out. That's the general rule of thumb. I've canned pickles with this and I, I, I mean this is a new method to me. I've just started doing it this year, but I've got pickles that I've canned for They've been on the shelf for over a month and a half and they look great and taste great and smell great so I'm not too concerned about that. I do not know if this method is, is approved to use with anything besides cucumbers though. I don't, I mean, I don't see why not. <laughs> the same principles seem to hold true for, to me but I'm not a scientist. So to me, it, I mean, to me it seems like you should be able to use this with okra or, or anything else. But again, I'm not a scientist. I can't find approved recipes for that stuff. The only thing I could find I'm talking about was cucumbers. Um, I did find some articles that said don't use this with low sodium brine. I don't know why that would make a difference, but that's another thing that you might want to keep in mind. Um, I wouldn't go too crazy with the ingredients. This is just standard pickle ingredients here, so it should work just fine. You could add a little sugar if you wanted to. Um, that should be okay. But um, other than that, we're going to uh, keep it. Let me look at my temperature. Eh, we got low on the temperature. It's going to take a little while for this canner to heat up. So basically that's it. I'm going to bring this up to 180 degrees, monitor it, keep it between 180 and 185 degrees. I'm going to have to adjust my oven temp or my stove top temperature up down just a little bit to get it up there. Um, I'm going to stick the lid on here for just a little while, at least partially to help keep it, help it, help it heat up just a little bit faster because I got a ways to go to get to 180 since I added water into it. But because it never gets up to a boiling, these pickles are going to stay crisp. So I'm going to wait until it gets to 180, start my timer, and then just watch it. Make sure it stays above 180. If it drops below, you're going to have to start the timer all over again, get it back up to 180 degrees. But while we're waiting on everything to finish up, I'm going to clean up here a little bit, and then I'll be back with you when these are done processing. All right, I don't know that this is getting my face in camera, but you kind of get the idea. I've got a minute left here. Well, a little bit less than a minute. I've been watching my temperature pretty closely. Now, it is a little bit of babysitting this thing because, you know, the good thing about this volume of water is that it heats up and, and cools off pretty slow. So once you get it up to about 180 degrees, it, it's not too difficult to hold it there. What I find with my stove top is that um, I turn it up. Um, it, the temperature would start rising, it'd get up to almost 185, I'd turn it down a notch, and then it'd start dropping back down. Oh, we're done. Move this off. Let me get this taken care of, and then I'll explain all that to you real quick. Okay, so, the good thing is, is it's not, you know, none of this is boiling, so it's not quite as hot and difficult to handle. Only thing we're going to do, I mean, this is just normal canning process. Take my jars out. I'm going to set them over here on... A towel we're gonna let them set for 12 hours and then check for a seal make sure they're sealed up remove the rings store them up let me get these taken care of then we'll come back and we'll talk to you about the process how it went and show you kind of final results because I canned some of these about a month ago 
All right, so like I said, we're gonna let those set for 12 hours, check the seal, and it's just, you just push on the top, make sure it's sealed. You should start hearing them going ping, you know, sealing up basically. Um, and once you've got the, the, you know, the jar sealed, you just remove the rings, that's gonna hold it. It's a good idea to remove the rings, leave just the lid on, that way you can just be sure that this is sealed. If it comes unsealed, it, it's, it's no good, you need to throw it out. Um, but these were done about a month ago, so we'll check those. Back to what I was talking about here, your stove top, I mean, you could do this in a regular pot. You don't have to use a canner like I did. You might want to put like a dish towel or something in the bottom to keep the jars off the bottom of the pot just a little bit, but you can do it in a regular pot. Um, like I said, the good thing about doing it in this canner is that it's a huge volume of water, so it heats up and cools down pretty slowly. So once I got it up to temperature, once I got it up to 180 degrees, I didn't have a setting on my stove that would hold it exactly 180 degrees. So I was going between, on my stove, it's seven and eight. Mine, mine goes by numbers, yours may be different. But basically what I'd do is I'd kick it up to number eight and it'd start raising, it'd get up close to 185, but it'd take about 10 minutes to get there. And then I'd kick it down to seven and it'd start dropping a little bit and getting down back close to 108. But again, take about 10 minutes to get there, kick it back up to eight. So I was you know, just easing it up and back and forth between 100 and 185 degrees, hold it there for 30 minutes that's it. Now let's talk about results. This is a jar of pickles that I did about a month ago. Now you want to let them sit for a couple of weeks, three weeks probably, before you crack into them. But what I've found with these is that, man, they just produce, it just produces the absolute best pickles. Let me get one out of here. So this is a pretty big pickle spear, probably bigger than I want to eat right now, but you get the idea. Let me get some seeds off there. Man, that is good. <laughs> That's the crunchiest pickle I've ever made. It's, it, I think it takes the brine up a little bit better. It's got better flavor than any pickle. You can taste the dill in there. It's just, this is my go-to method for making pickles going forward. This is fantastic. I don't know if you can hear that crunch. This is a winner for sure. All right, like I've said a few times in here, you really want to make sure you follow, follow food safety guidelines. So you know, don't take my word for it that this is a food safe recipe. Look it up for yourself. I'll link to the, um, you know, to the, to the uh, National Food Preservation, whatever it's called. I can't ever remember the name of it, but you know, the, the, the place that monitors all that, you know, it's a safe, it, it's guaranteed safe if you find it on their website or in a ball book or something like that. Um, this recipe is just a standard pickle recipe because the acidity is up there. It should be perfectly fine to, to pickle your cucumbers with. Again, I don't know that it's actually okay to, to use with like okra or jalapenos, but I don't really find that necessary. Those do fine in a water bath canner. They don't get super mushy. They're, they're fine. I don't need to do them any differently. It's just the cucumbers. It works great. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, God bless.